well when you enjoy your work you will excel on it you need to be passionate about what you're doing if you think that it is a job then you will not only have lose interest in that but the passion you need to instill will always be missing but if you're honest with yourself you will fairly quickly know whether the work that you're doing is a good fit for you if you're not enjoying it make a change course correct quickly so don't waste time suffering thinking that one day your reward will come so that was sri akhil sibbal and i have been a very big fan of all his webinars this was an extract from one of his webinars hi everyone you're watching the virtual amicus and i'm jay lodha so today joining us is a very special speaker well he's never ever shied away from pulling up state authorities when the occasion demanded it and he's always adopted a pro human rights pro privacy pro free speech while deciding cases and also has uh cemented the belief that courts duty as a guardian of fundamental rights is always there and he's also taken number of cases touching upon issues which are which was homo to so joining us today on the virtual amicus we have with us honorable mr justice govind mathur sir who is the former chief justice of alabad high court and former judge of alabad high court and rajasthan high court and the topic for today's discussion would be on how to improve the uh, quality and structuring of arguments in a court of law and what not to argue in a court of law so thank you so much sir for taking out time uh, it really means a lot uh, you know having you for a session sir anything that you wish to say before we start with the q and a section sir uh, my thanks to virtual amicus and mr jay lodha it's a really fantastic to be with you uh, as a matter of fact uh, with the young lawyers i feel that i am still young sir and uh, it's a great opportunity me for me to interact with young lawyers thank you so much sir for your kind words really means a lot sir uh, we can quickly start with our q and a segment sir if you are ready we can start yes yeah, sure so the question number 1 sir uh, you've adorned both uh, honorable alabad high court sir in the capacity of honorable chief justice and as well as honorable rajasthan high court in the capacity of a judge so what in your opinion with respect to what is your opinion with respect to the quality of arguments that are advanced by young lawyers in both the states and where do you think we are going wrong sir This is so far as our young lawyers are concerned. I see that our new young generation that is highly talented, and they are having, they are appearing before the court. Maybe that at Allahabad or Lucknow or at Jaipur or Jodhpur, I always find that young lawyers are coming with complete preparation. They are advancing their relevant arguments, and uh, I feel. that young generation is capable to maintain the our standards of judiciary and i am very sure that our judiciary is is in safe is having a great future and is in safe hands uh, so far as uh, comparison at allahabad high uh, allahabad lucknow jaipur jodhpur there is concern uh, allahabad high court that was established in 1866 now it has completed 155 years in the history of 155 years allahabad high court has witnessed very important cases legendary judges legendary lawyers and different kind of cases whereas the rajasthan high court that was established on 29th of august 1949 this high court has developed as a wonderful institution dealt with excellent cases had wonderful judges and legendary lawyers but traditions plays a vital role in developing a lawyer and also a judge i find little difference in the lawyers of allahabad and rajasthan uh, allahabad lawyers are much more logic based than the precedent based lawyers what i find in rajasthan that we much more believe in case laws the moment some query is coming from the court a, a reflect action is that our right hand just goes to carry a book to cite a judgment to meet the query of the court whereas at lucknow and allahabad at allahabad i find that the first lawyer tries to meet with a logic by advancing different argument with the interaction 
and then if he fails to satisfy the court then only he cites precedent so this is a difference and i think this is because of the tradition there to have much more interactive court than to just to read and cite the judgments i have noticed that uh, uh, lawyers at alaba are not reading the judgments in entirety they are just advancing the crux so that is saving time of the court otherwise young lawyers in uttar pradesh as well as in rajasthan they are ex we are having excellent lawyers this five year course that has uh, done a tremendous job the lawyers are knowing what we were uh, knowing when they are entering in profession what we were not knowing even after practicing for good 7 8 years very well sir uh so going ahead with our next question sir what would be your piece of advice to all the young lawyers who are watching law students are watching and also if you could give valuable tips here to all the youngsters to help them improve their quality of arguments in a court of law you see first whenever a lawyer is come appearing before the court he must be full of confidence and a man can attain acquire confidence only when he is fully prepared with the case on facts as well as on law the lawyer is always required to see in the eyes of judges and should permit the judge to see the judge in his eyes so far as framing arguments are concerned if you are prepared with the case then you are if you are having complete you have marshal all the facts then you are required to give a legal shape to the facts near availability of facts is not sufficient facts certainly plays a vital role but if you don't give a legal shape to the facts then that is not an argument that is just narration of a story so you are required to give a complete legal shape a proposition is required to be advanced and when you are arguing a matter you first your own logic on law you yourself is required to satisfy yourself that whatever you are going to say what argument you are going to advance that is not leading to absurdity you see don't leave any argument how each and every argument any everything uh, you don't know which argument will appeal to the court but that must not be absurd that must not to be contrary to law that must not be irritating irritating means sometimes when you are framing the uh, framing your argument when you are advancing a preposition before the courts but repeating that again and again if you are not clear in your words that irritates the court and always be prepared to answer query of the court never avoid or ignore the query of the court that is the proper way to advance the arguments wow what valuable and amazing insights there coming in from our micus for today's session so uh, now going ahead with our next question uh, if you could also recommend any good re any good books to young lawyers sir and law students since you are a voracious reader yourself you see uh i when i entered in profession my senior by chance who also happens to be my elder brother he advised me certain books Uh, autobiography of M. C. Shitalwat, autobiography of Justice Hidayatullah, my own Boswell, autobi. Then number of autographies and the wonderful book is the Roses in the Summer. I think these classical books are having great importance. Then in last few years, we have received a wonderful book written by 
are we have our very senior lawyers, F.S. Nariman's book, uh, Before the Memory Fades. And there are, there are a number of other books, but I always prefer autobiographies. These autobiographies are having a very important role in making of a lawyer. This gives you how to prepare yourself to face not only the court, but the entire world. You are required to face as a lawyer, you are required to face litigant, you are required to face your opposite counsel, you are required to face a judge, and then you are also accountable to ultimately your own conscience. So yes, autobiography plays a very vital role. And one thing very important, beside the law, autobiographies also gives you a detailed history step by step. Beside the legal books, I also prefer to have a reading of certain other books, philosophical books, I think to develop your complete uh, personality, you are required to read certain other things also. I In Hindi, I found a very, very famous novel of Vishnu Prabhakar Ardhanarishwar. Similarly, the famous work of Simen de Bawa, uh, The Second Sex. These all are the books. There are a number of other uh, novels, fictions, and other philosophical books, which I feel that not only to a lawyer, but for every vigilant man, those books are required to be read. Very well, sir. We've taken note of that. And to all the viewers of watching, I hope you're making notes and noting down all the names. Now, sir, going ahead with our next question. Uh, this is one dilemma that I've also faced as a practicing advocate, as a lawyer, that should should we adopt a storytelling approach on the dais wherein we narrate all the facts to the court, which is backed by uh, legal submissions and uh, case law citation, or should we be aggressive or should the approach depend on both the kind of matter and before the kind of bench that it is listed? Actually, this is the entire the game of how to express and how the judge understand. I tell you one incident that when I was a practicing lawyer, one of my repetition came to be dismissed in default in 1994. I came to about know about dismissal of that repetition in, also, uh, in default somewhere in 97-98. And in this entire period, no application was filed for restoration of the repetition. When I came to know about dismissal of that red petition, I immediately moved an application for restoration of the red petition and uh, certainly an affidavit stating perfectly the true facts that I was not knowing about dismissal of this matter. This was purely my error. When the court called the case, my opposite counsel was a very senior lawyer and he was opposing a uh, restoration application to nail. Ultimately, the, I tell you, Justice V.S. Kogze was hearing the matter. Then he asked me, yes, what do you want to say? I didn't utter a single word. I just, with my fingers, I just touched my ears and kept silence. Justice Kogge restored the repetition by a detailed order. So it is ultimately, it is your expression of that time. So far as your question is concerned, this, I never prefer this storytelling. For the reason that you are arguing before a constitutional court or a apex court of a state or apex court of the country, you must presume that Judge is competent enough to catch your issues. Just introduce the facts, come to the points, come to the point, and proceed with the arguments. What a storytelling is concerned is concerned that consumes huge time. And further, 
that never at least i never advanced arguments in that manner and i have never liked that way because the minimum requirement from judge also is that he must be acquainted with minimum facts of the case and therefore a storytelling style at least that never appeals to me and to my knowledge most of the judges too doesn't prefer that but yes lawyer is required to adopt the practice as the court wants ultimately it is the expression so at that juncture you are required to satisfy yourself that what kind of expression will appeal the judge wow so to sum it up i think it's a we are in a profession of persuasion so the approach depends totally on what the demand is so supply will yes, have to be according yes, to the yes, demand yes this is how it is wow really valuable insights coming in now uh, sir going ahead with our next question sir uh, sir do you think that you know there we we keep hearing about the guru shishya parampara that used to exist that used to be uh, before we entered practice that a senior lawyer would mentor the junior lawyer sit with him have discussions they would have presentations once in a week do you think that parampara that trend is now on the verge of extinction or is it already extinct or or there are still certain tra- uh, offices that are still functioning uh, on that you see the life is kinetic everything is changing every day uh, i remain as i i remain associated with my senior for good 6 years and uh, all the lawyers who were practicing at that time they the 5 years was the minimum time to be associated with a senior and this was a lifetime relation full time you know and as a matter of fact this associates were learning from their seniors and they were adopting so many things from their seniors at that time we were not having technology in our hands now you are having technology in your hands what i came to know in 5 years you can understand that in 5 months so guru shishya parampara all right it is very attractive the process of learning is in schools in institutions in when i am saying institution it's guru shishya parampara but the period of that guru shishya uh, schooling that is certainly required to be curtailed now that can't go for 5 years 6 years 7 years with the aid of technology it can be reduced by 2 years or 3 years but yes teacher and pupil senior and associate this is a relation that will always remain in existence so far as courts are concerned so far as making of a lawyer is concerned it is not simple just that what you have read that is to be vomited it is not like that you are required to make yourself how to absorb and then how to use what you have absorbed to express your taste to ad- advance or to make your own personality so yes guru shishya parampara will remain in existence but in a different form and now technology is an essential part for making of a lawyer for pre- making a personality a complete personality of a lawyer so i think sir on a lighter note technology is the new guru <laughs> yes it is a partial guru partial guru not complete yes, yes. very well sir now sir uh, going ahead with the next question sir what is the the ideal time period for a junior lawyer to go independent Uh, or to have his to have one set up his own independent practice and according to you sir how many years of juniorship is also required is there, there a any, criteria there can't be any watertight compartment for this you see some i have seen very good lawyers who remained as a associate with their senior for only 6 or 8 months i have seen wonderful lawyers and i have seen a 
lawyers failed for their indefinite periods association with their senior going for 10 years 12 years 15 years then that virtually i fail to understand that how a person can remain associate for such a long period so it depends upon circumstances what opportunity you are having in the office but yes i remain associate to my senior for about 6 years i also i am fortunate enough to have good associates with me and uh, i think the average period of my association the association of my juniors with me was not, not less than 3 years so it depends upon individual normally 2 years 3 years and it also depends upon flow of individual cases if you have individual cases are coming to you and you are not in position to balance with office work as well as your individual work then you are required to go for your independent work but in any case there can't be any water tank compartment for determining this time period facts and circumstances might differ yes 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 it all depends on that sir sir absolutely now sir talking about advocacy uh, pre and post covid now things have changed completely we have the virtual setup the hybrid mode so do you see this as the norm in future do you think that virtual hearings will be helpful in future for the litigant and the court you see during the covid period this uh, virtual hearing that played a very vital role hybrid mode played a very vital role but essentially i support open courts i support virtual courts you see we are having a concept of open court khuli adalat i tell you one thing that judges are not super human beings they are also simple human beings but by their experience by their knowledge of law some of some from among the lawyers and from judicial officers they became high court judge they are also open for induction effect induction effect means that whatever kind of material is available when a piece of iron is kept with a magnet then that piece of iron also acquires certain magnetic tendencies so what i feel that a judge is always required to be checked and who is checking a judge number one first his own conscience his own soul and then the hundred eyes sitting before him in court these are the eyes of litigants these are the eyes of lawyers these are the eyes of the persons present in the court which are keeping a judge a perfect judge and when i am talking about a perfect judge it requires everything including the minimum requirement that is honest integrity commitment efficiency everything so ultimately these are the virtual courts which can keep a judge perfect judge but yes for certain other purposes like your all these formal orders these um, uh, uh, instead of actual courts you can go for virtual courts but for hearing of arguments for hearing of cases on length it is the actual court that will physical hearing that will play a vital role the virtual courts can't replace the actual courts physical courts physical mode of hearing otherwise you see technology is my in my hand i can curtail your arguments at any moment but in court a lawyer is having a lawyer can hold the bull by horns so 
personally i feel that physical hearing is must and for that purpose only besides that there were certain other reasons also in that entire covid period allahabad high court was going physically as a chief justice i never closed the court the doors of the close uh, courts were never closed for administrative justice sir. Yeah, absolutely yes, yes, yes. Even, and even for that matter sir to add to that uh, masks if if they are made mandatory then i think there is no harm in having physical yes. appearances in court yes yes you, can, you, can, and, yeah. you see now you think if for moment as you made that the covid or any kind of other virus that is that remain present for several years what will you do you have to learn to live with that you can say that um, all right because of this pandemic we will not do anything courts have to work and besides that there are thousands and thousands of viruses that the atmosphere houses sir there are so many different diseases so yes. we can't be yes. at home and yes yes that's, that's a very important yes. points made by sir now sir uh, coming to this is my personal favorite question sir and uh, so you've always adopted a pro human rights approach pro free speech approach while deciding cases and being a guardian of uh, fundamental rights so any such landmark judgment that you have authored uh, you wish to share with our viewers you see by in the 70 tenure of 17 years i had ample opportunity to decide matters relating to human rights human liberty personal liberty there are number of judges of rajasthan high court the judgments of rajasthan high court as well as allahabad high court where as a custodian of constitution high court played vital role i am aware of number of judgments of rajasthan high court as well as of allahabad high court but i always prefer not to refer a single or one specific judgment i think there are number of judgments of high courts not authored by only a single judge by various judges that played a very vital role in maintaining our uh, independence of judiciary or in saving our personal liberty liberty of this human liberty human rights etc but yes in al rajasthan high court when i think i i always remember one case uh, of shankar versus state of rajasthan that was essentially a division bench criminal appeal a lady was killed she was murdered for the reason by that the murderer or the accused he was of the view that that lady is a witch the man was conducted but while um, the man was convicted but why why affirming his conviction i registered and a public interest litigation a writ petition in public interest regarding several ills prevailing in tribal area or in southern part of rajasthan or several other places that writ petition ultimately resulted into introduction of prohibition of which act in the state of rajasthan so that was if i feel that that i am not saying that that was the, the judgment which is required to be read because in that entire process nothing is there but it was an effort of the court to have an important legislation in this regard then i think that the judgment of with regard to placing posters in the city of lucknow and meerut that was in my opinion that was the case where the personal liberty was highly injured similarly there are certain other judgments 
but i feel that these all are the judgments of the high court and these are not of the individual judge there are plenty of judgments there are number of judgments by different high courts and the apex court which are required to be read by lawyers and other people also and sir uh, lastly which phase of life do you enjoy more as a as a leading lawyer of the state of rajasthan or as a and i'm outstanding judge and the chief justice of i enjoyed my life in entirety i enjoyed my life in entirety and i tell you one thing i am really a fortunate to be a judge for the reason that i retired from the office my i am passing through the best period of my life i am having time to do what i really want lastly sir anything that you wish to say before we wrap this episode uh, towards the end god bless you all live and let live is the best principle of life give a space to everybody here anyone who want to tell you something never ignore any person live and let live is the best thing well thank you so much sir there are certain sessions that you just don't want to end this was definitely one of them but then unfortunately sir your time is precious thank you very much thank you much of your time thank you thank you very much for giving me this opportunity thank you so much sir we hope to see you okay. again okay. it's goodbye for now thank you sir thank bye, you. bye.